everybody this is sherry with red apple auctions welcome back today is the valentine's day issue i'm in all pink it's not normally a color i wear a lot i tend to if i'm going to wear anything it's going to be red not pink but i'm embracing the whole holiday and even though i'm not a pink girl i am a theme girl so if the theme is pink i'm going to go with pink i am wanting to talk about auction trends today because it's still sort of the beginning of the year i realize it's february but if you're a member of my newsletter, you know that at the last newsletter that I wrote for 2023, I said I was going to pull back on some of my YouTube videos because I wanted to devote more time to doing some behind the scenes things at my business, as well as do some specific video trainings for my clients only. And so there's only so many hours in the day. I have to pick and choose so i pulled back on on youtube but this is one topic that i wanted to talk about and if uh, i thought i had a few minutes here i could carve out a video so that's what I'm, I'm going to do this content is pulled from a training that i led for my clients only last month and in that in the client corner i pulled seven trends that i'm noticing in auctions that i am encouraging my clients to think about act on and so forth just to make sure that they are front and center ahead of the the curve so to speak and so what i thought i would do for the youtube crowd is to condense this i'm going to talk about three of the seven if you are a client and you're watching this video stop right now <laughs> and go watch instead the client corner video because it's more in depth and provides some how to's that i think are going to be better for elevating our consulting conversation. And this is gonna be more higher level content. So just keep that in mind. Go watch the other video, not this one, if you're a client, meaning that we've got an auction on the books for you coming up here. So first off, I wanna talk a little bit about trend number one, which it has to do with your tickets, which are going up, up, up. Now, to backtrack a little bit, this data is being pulled from the auctions that I worked last year. So in 2023, I worked in 21 different states. Oh, and the District of Columbia, so really kind of like 22 areas. And this is schools, this is nonprofits, everything from very small events. I think the smallest was $30,000 to well over million dollar events. So that gives you a sense of where I'm pulling the data from. But as I look across the board, what we're seeing is increased ticket prices. My school specifically, the median ticket price for my schools is sitting at $150. Now that's not the range, right? Some schools charge $0 to come to their auction. Some were charging $275 to come to their auction per person. But the median was $150. In contrast with my nonprofit clients, that range was a bit wider from any, anywhere from $85 to about $1,000 a person, but the median price per person sat at $250. And for my association clients, that's usually the median price is $0 and it was last year as well. Some associations charge to attend their auction, but most associations, the auction event is part of their three-day conference, and so it's just sort of included in the registration fee. My point in this is that expenses have increased. Inflation, your services, I know that you're seeing it, and so you've got to make up that difference. If you haven't increased your ticket price in 2022 or 2023, you got to be looking at doing that in 2024. Now, of course, we all know if we've been involved in this business for a while, that when you're talking about ticket pricing, it can lead to some pretty heated discussions in our, in our committee meetings. One camp, it's like, we have to increase the ticket price. We need to make money. The other camp is like, no, we want to keep this a community event. This is all about getting together and celebrating. It's this big debate back and forth about what is this event? Is it a fundraiser? Is it a community driver? driver? What is the right ticket uh, uh, price that's gonna make sure that we can achieve all the goals that we have? There's a lot going on there. So with regards to that, what I did in the with my clients and what I'm gonna encourage you to do with whomever your trusted resource is with regards to auctions is to talk about ticket pricing strategies that you can incorporate that are gonna make sure that you achieve your goals. How can you structure your tickets so that you're getting the right people in the room? And for you, again, right might mean a certain group that's just high wealth and you're not giving a discount to everybody but then you may have a discount for some groups other other schools other nonprofits may say no absolutely we need that so i don't know what it's going to be right for you 
my clients. I gave them five different strategies on how to approach that and how to change their, their tickets so that it will work. And there's going to be something that's going to work for you. You just got to find it. I'm looking here because I've got some things going on on my screen here that I don't know what's going on. You might notice I'm on a different setup. So I, my, um, my ring light broke, so I can't, I got to get a new ring light. And meanwhile, I'm using this little tiny light down here. So I got to be seated for this training because, um, my cord won't stretch for this little itty bitty light. I got to buy a new ring light. That's for sure. So trend number one, higher ticket prices. Number two, what should we talk about? Hmm. What should, let's talk about this one. QR codes. QR codes are everywhere. They're on silent auction tables and live auction tables, and they're on raffle signage. They're on the registration tables and you go sit down at the gala table they're at the gala tables and they're just everywhere and so it might be directing people to buy a ticket it might be directing people for more information it might be directing people to bid all kinds of things now what does that mean it means that you got to use software if you're going to use a qr code i did do a separate video on qr codes i'll see if i can pull that up and put it in the show notes for you so you can learn more about that if that's if that's of, of interest to you but regardless people are pulling these qr codes out of the auction software which is another blog post i have because there's like 40 different companies that auction uh, that offer software to the nonprofit school auction space i try to keep this particular post updated even though i wrote it a few years ago the good news is is that you have a wide selection and there's some really affordable options out there that are going to fit the budget and the needs that you have to accomplish what you want so if in the past you were like oh my gosh way too expensive i know that there's going to be something out there that will work for you now in fact i can think of one maybe two that even offer free services of their software if your auction is below a certain level so that could even fit for you depending on the size of your gala when you're looking at the auction software though here's what i want you to keep in mind there's a difference between mobile bidding and software mobile bidding is a feature that many software companies offer in their software but it's not like when i say software you immediately have to use mobile bidding it's completely separate it they're they're not it's just a feature of the software itself so you can use software and choose to use mobile bidding or choose to use paper bidding it's up to you and i say that because we still have quite a few people who are not using mobile bidding for any number of reasons maybe they have bad wi-fi where they are maybe their crowd doesn't like it maybe the nature of their event it's it's better if they have paper bid sheets right so 24 percent of the schools that i worked with last year used paper bid sheets regardless of whether they had software and 36 percent of my nonprofits used paper bid sheets regardless of whether they had software or not when you use paper bid sheets it allows you to use a few techniques to drive higher return on investment in your silent auction that cannot be replicated in mobile bidding. Sometimes that's why paper bid sheets are used. So just keep that in mind. We see QR codes, that's a technology add-on, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we're using mobile bidding as well. We may or we may not. So that's the second one, QR codes are everywhere. Third trend, what's the third one? Let me pick and choose here. Let's go with this one. This is tied to special appeals, fund to needs, raise the paddle, whatever you call it. And there has been an uptick in special appeals that are focused on funding mental health related programs. Are we surprised? After the pandemic, what have we all heard about? Counseling, mental health, crisis in the United States. So in a school auction, that might look like something that's funding an anti-bully program or some sort of a, a curriculum around that or counseling services. Maybe they're bringing on another counselor in nonprofits that might be funding directly counseling sessions or classes tied to mental health any type of mental health services. Now, for those of you that are social services agencies, I work with several of them. Many of them have a plethora of different services that they offer 
They might do your taxes. They might take your car and sell it for, and, and create funding for themselves. They might have an entrepreneurial program. And oh, by the way, they also have counseling services. So in those cases, it's pretty easy to pull that program out and feature it in your fund need. Talk about it, highlight it, and so forth. But even for those of you that are not social services and have a very crystal clear cut out counseling program, it doesn't mean that you would be immune from wanting to reach out in this way. One of my hospitals last year, one of the last auctions I did of 2023, their focus of the appeal was on funding brain health programs in the hospital, <clears throat> right? This wasn't their thing, but I will share an idea. You might be a hospital that has one of those, what are they called? Labyrinths right? Where people walk, you know, it's to clear their mind. You might offer meditation classes. That would be something that you could talk about. Alternative wellness programs designed really mentally improve your health, mental health. Um, if you are a arts program, maybe you offer painting classes, drawing classes, well, you could have a testimonial. One of the people who takes your classes, oh, I just love it. This is me time every week. I go in, I learn about painting. It clears my mind. It allows me to just focus on something I'm interested in, it brings my stress level down, mental health. You know, all of that kind of ties into it. So it can run the gamut, but I'll just gen generally say it's just we've seen this uptick in anything that's funding mental health related programs. Now, by no means am I saying of all the auctions that I worked last year, woof, the majority of them were funding that. Now, most of them, if I had to look, are probably funding mission-driven programs. It's just generic programs just going into the big pot, right? But more than ever last year, <laughs> when I looked down through the list, oh, this one's funding the playground, this one's funding a new bus, this one's funding a, you know, outdoor area. Oh. I would see more that were geared towards funding mental health programs in one form or fashion. So as you think about your nonprofit, be creative. You know, I just gave you a couple of examples there, but this is a way that you can start to tap into something that the culture is already tapping into, and it enables you then to kind of showcase what you're doing in that field too. These are the kinds of things yeah, I like when I'm working with my clients, I like I really do like their event to be the cutting edge one in their town. I want them to be the showcase event. And the way that we get there is we we think creatively about what's going to put us ahead, what's going to make us different, what's going to make their event the one that everybody else looks at to say, oh, they do a good event. That's the kind of thing. So as you're thinking about these three trends, what are you doing that can be adapted to pull in for your own event? Yeah, so you can be the, the leader in your area. Okay. Uh, if you're looking for other ideas, redappleauctions.com is a great place to start. Or if you want to talk to me about your event and how we can work together, how I work, uh, kind of the program that I put my clients through, you can set up a meeting over on my website as well, redappleauctions.com. We'll see you on the next video down the road.